Tim, I'll start with the sending off. What was your take on it? And have you had an explanation about it? <coughs> the referee, when we swapped the team sheets over, said that um, with, you know, with the current COVID things, we're probably not allowed. Could, could we do it through the assessor? Um, this is before the game. The assessor said at half time, I believe, not to me, but it was relayed to me that he felt that he managed that decision very poorly. He could have acted with common sense. Um, I mean, to get a second yellow for that is absolutely unbelievable. Make no mistake, that doesn't paper over the fact that we were slow out the block. Somebody came in and said that was the best warm up we've had. And then we start so slowly. Two, two set plays, we lose first contact three times in our own box. And then again, for the second one, we give the ball away in midfield. They win a corner as a result and score from it. Um, and then obviously, listen, we get a I mean, a ridiculous goal from Hooper. I mean, fantastic finish. Um, so you think, all right, well, can we bet ourselves into the game? Then that happens. Um, you know, listen, after that, they're popping it around. We tried to, to go like with a three, three v two at that, and, and try and get some extra bodies into midfield and pass, try and break through them and pass through them. Um, and the third goal kills it. Set play. You know, a free kick it goes round that one-man wall. I don't even know why he's bothering standing there. You see him doing anything. Um, it certainly isn't affecting the ball. The kid gets a nick, I believe. It's hard to see from here through all the bodies. He gets a nick and it just goes in in slow motion. It's, it's absolute garbage, the, the, the third goal. And then, obviously, Nerfield, Nerfield runs away from us and we don't lay a glove on him, you know. Foul him, do something, stop him getting to the edge of the box. Um, to be honest, listen, I could have played in goal for them second half. He didn't have to touch it, really, has he? So um, the sending off absolutely destroyed the game. But uh, nevertheless, it doesn't paper over the cracks of, of our of our poor poor play. I was going to say, obviously, the red card didn't help, and Yeovil, in fairness, them kept possession very well in the in the second half. But it must be frustrating that we gave ourselves an uphill battle to concede two sloppy goals from, from our point of view. Absolutely. I guess. Absolutely. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. You know, it was. Do you know what? It was almost like deja vu from the Boreham Wood game here. You know, obviously, we, we concede off two corners. Um, then get sent off, uh, you know, a man sent off. It's almost a carbon copy. Then they're stringing it around, you know, across the back and out, and all of a sudden everyone's piping up next to me, you know, because they can sit down and relax. Um, it, it was like a carbon copy of that game. Um, so two months down the line, you say, well, all right, have we learned from our mistakes? No, obviously, obviously. But the bottom line is, listen, if you can't put your head, I've said it so many times, if you can't put your head on the ball in both boxes in National League, get your coat. Do we suffer from naivety yeah. in those situations? Is, is that well, the, the biggest concern? Well, I don't know. It's, it's, it's basically losing, losing contacts to the ball with naivety. But there's, when I look around, there's one or two young faces, but there's a lot of experienced faces as well. So if you're, if you're past 30 years of age and you're still naive, then I suggest you go and play go and play with your kids in the garden or something like that. You know, go and play football that doesn't count because, um, or play with a pub team or something because at the end of the day, this league is renowned you know, for, for, for being physical, in your face and set play dominated. Basically, a lot of teams dominate, uh, dominate from, from restarts you know, and set their game plan out to do so. You know, now that they're a big side. I told, we had a team meeting yesterday and I said there's a huge side. You know, they're big, physical, they've got good delivery. As happens, Dickinson didn't play. The left the kid who puts it in with his left. Um, but they've got good delivery and they're on the move and strong. So, uh, listen, it was, it was, you should, should, well, talk about shooting yourself in the foot. But it all comes from a, from a slow start. Um, is there an update on, on Anthony Wordsworth? He's obviously missed the last two games. Anthony Wordsworth's got a dead leg. He came off at Kings Lynn with a dead leg. That's why he came off, off the field and was substituted. Since then, um, he's had treatment. Um, he came out and to warm up uh, yesterday and came straight back in after about five minutes. He was clearly limping. He's had it scanned. It, there is uh, blood bruising in his, in his quad. So uh, that, that's what's keeping him out. In terms of injuries, Josh Walker's back in training. Um, he's looked OK so far but he's only done certain parts so Josh is floating around Matt Preston's back training but he's still some way off he looks as though he, he needs at least another couple of weeks and he said that himself to me um, but listen I'm, I'm more concerned at the moment with what you know 
what I'm seeing out there and, and you know, things things haven't changed do you know what I mean it's like you're trying to get more organised you're trying to be a bit more streetwise in this division a bit more savvy and you know, not just me ain't seeing it you know there's a lot of good people at this football club you know so from, from supporters to people who really care about it and right now they didn't get nothing back from this team they get nothing nothing back we go like you know, we do all right against Halifax, we do well against Halifax. Then, you know, we have a damp squib a bit against Woking, then we get absolutely mullered at Kings Lynn. So we go down, we have a right, you know, we have a go at Hartlepool. Then we have another, you know, half fiasco, people getting sent off and, and not doing their jobs. You know, and it's like banging your head against a brick wall. You see, you know, in the end, you know, are people listening? You know, this is, all this stuff has worked in this division for the last two or three years well, you know obviously another club but everything that we're doing has, has got us into the you know to the higher echelons of this division and right now it ain't working here so um, you know got to revisit it Just lastly what will the plan be now we've got a week's break until we take on Wrexham Wrexham here in your mindset what's the, what's the plan to try and change things Well we'll, we'll obviously listen we've got whatever the result you know, second, they've had to go an hour now with 10 men. Um, there'll be a small group in tomorrow having, having treatment and rehabilitation. Then we'll train Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, we'll be in Saturday morning. Um, or we'll be in Monday and obviously prep the game for, for, for Tuesday. Um, so, listen, obviously we've brought Lee in. Um, listen, let's see, if, uh, let's see how some of those injuries, uh, you know, whether we get any better news on them. I think from what I've heard, Wordsworth might be expected back round about the weekend time to, to maybe do some some training with us. Um, as I say, we're, we're assessing Josh Walker on a daily basis, so let's see if any of those float back into the frame. Um, other than that, you know, we've got a, we've got some hard work to do as usual.